in Hayworth, Illinois. This is a small town in central Illinois. 2,700 people in this town. Hmm. Um, a teacher who has been teaching for about 20 some odd years in March held what she calls a book tasting for students. She's been teaching middle school. So these kids are like probably, uh, youngest is probably like 12, 13, 14, adolescents. And she's dedicated her life to public service, been teaching for 20 years. 20 just put, years. Just putting that out there. Uh, I wanted to give them a smattering of fiction and nonfiction to choose from on a day that we call Reading Monday. We just read and celebrate books. She said, over the years, she has watched her students graduate, go to college, only to return a year later because she says they had a tough time acclimating to bigger, more diverse spaces. This is a problem with, you know, you come from a town of 2,700 people. You consume media that scares you, frankly, about people that don't look like you, whether they're Muslim or black or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, look, I grew up in a city of 160,000. Now it was, it, again, it was 40 years ago, but you know, I don't think at that time, like I had ever knowingly met a gay person. And I went to a school with, uh, undoubtedly, there were, there were gay kids there. Um, and, but Worcester was a fairly parochial place. And it was also an era where, you know, people uh, would stay somewhat closeted because of like the, the general homophobia. I just, I had no idea what, I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't even know if like I even had a notion until I was in high school of like, w like w what a gay person was. You go to you go to school in a town of twenty seven hundred in the middle of Illinois, like you're not exposed to anything. This this one happens to be ninety seven ninety eight percent white. Literally, literally. The, the the you do not have an exposure to people, and so what she did is what a teacher uh, should exactly. Um, on Reading Monday, one of the books offered one of the books offered was this book is gay. It is a best-selling nonfiction book that's billed by its publisher as an entertaining and informative instruction manual for anyone coming out as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or trans. And uh, Bonner, this is the teacher, wrote a book that, quote, provides teachers with a step-by-step -step guidance for developing a class culture that welcomes curiosity and ignites social action. I know that's terrifying. It's communism. So you did this on a Monday. By Wednesday, she received notice that parents had gotten hold of pictures from that book that their child had taken in class. By Friday, I was told the parents had filed a police report against me for child endangerment. Um, she has a 10-year-old son. She wanted to support these kids who were going off to school, to college, out into the world. For like, the world is a diverse place. Yeah. And who knows, maybe she knows something that she's not going to reveal to the media that there's a kid or two or three in her class that could use this book. I mean, I, I was in high school in a similarly demographic uh, a community, Mandan, North Dakota, 97, 95% white. Um, and I just remember like the homophobia at that age and zero countervailing influence. It wasn't until like maybe high school there was a gay straight alliance. Um, I'm trying to remember if that was until college till I till that showed up at one of my schools, but uh, like this is this is exactly like the right direction where we we should be going, and what we're seeing now is just parents re bigoted parents' reaction to that. And uh, she said after listening to her students' questions and interests, Bonner uh, Bonner structured a curriculum. She says included a diverse library of texts. In other words, you know, you're reading a bunch of books on Mondays. And some she included centered black, indigenous, and LGBTQ characters and themes. She says, up until now, I've been supported by the communities I've taught with. However, 1,600 books were banned over the course of the 2021-2022 uh, school year. This is from Penn. Um, 
It's not necessarily about what happened to me, she said. It's about how things have really changed for students. There was a 2020 National Literary Trust research report that says most kids age 9 to 18 say it's important to read books from a range of backgrounds. Like, I don't know what could be more obvious. Well, it's amazing how the conservatives project that liberals are in favor of indoctrination when literally what this teacher is doing is providing a swath of options and saying you can connect to these alternate it's the perspectives. It's of the indoctrination. opposite. It's yeah. the exact opposite. They're mad she's not insulating them. Right. Nearly half said they like to read stories with characters who are different from them. And I got news for the, for the other half. You should read uh, books with characters who are different from you. That I is going to... a white uh, male protagonist in everything I read. Thank you. Um, and she... Uh, she said that she understands that parents know their children best and believes that both parents and educators have that love and care in common. But she says, the difference is that I have that love and care for all students, not just a singular student. Mm -hmm. In regards to the book that was challenged in my classroom, it was a message to the LGBTQ community in my room and in my district that they're less than. And so I think you're right. She knows that there's kids there who uh, may or may not be out and could use this information in a way that is not stigmatized, that maybe they want to protect the fact that they're not out. Yeah. And if everybody has to read it, then everybody gets along. But there's also just a tremendous amount of value in learning about people's experience that aren't you. Yeah. There is. I mean, that's how I feel like I engendered or learned to be more empathetic growing up is is through reading through root i mean I'll, I'll never forget reading the book the bluest eye by tony morrison in, in high school and like how that was about the internalized um shame or internalized racism that a young black girl felt growing up and that changed my entire worldview on that way about beauty standards about what it was like to navigate the world being black in this country i mean that was transformative and this is what the entire uh, among a bunch of other books but this is what the republicans are trying to stamp out are these moments of empathy and understanding and they pretend that it's like the most demonic thing possible because they're using this fundamentalist worldview indoctrination for sexual abuse psychotic this is um i remember i mentioned the other day about that catholic fundamentalist who came on to complain about uh seeing a lesbian couple on chopped they need to construct a bubble they cannot let anything else in this bubble or they will not be able to retain control yeah. That's what this is about. It's about control. It's about dominance. It's about authoritarianism that emanates out of a fundamentalist worldview. The day after Bonner learned about the police report, she received a letter from her school district. She had been placed on administrative leave. They were uh, is that like being investigating. moderated and deboosted on Twitter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she decided to resign. My first instinct was the kids, she said, adding that many of her current and former students spoke during the board meeting. There was a board meeting saying that her classroom was a safe place. And what message is that sent to those kids that she was looking mm -hmm. out for? Yep. What dark future? How dark? How much darker is their future gotten their immediate future? That's the point, right? She said, uh, if I am a safe place and I'm leaving, what does that do for our students? Right. What about the kids? Thinking about what happens to them was definitely hard. But she had to leave. Hero. Hero. I mean, this is how we treat our most dedicated public servants in this country. This is how we treat them. I mean, uh, through COVID, <laughs> through COVID, you have psychos essentially ripping into teachers unions because they just want more protection for themselves and their kids. And now through this CRT, you decide to talk about racism. We're going to oust you. We're going to fire you. Um, you try to make... Uh, your classroom in a subtle way a little bit more inclusive for your potentially gay trans students you're out of here and and also just like i mean if there was if everybody in that class was cis and straight 
Like the idea that this doesn't have value is just absurd. Yeah. It's just absurd. Would you say like, well, there's nobody in here who's, you know, Chinese or Japanese or, uh, you know, Australian or, uh, you know, Egyptian. Well, there's no point in reading about those places. It's just absurd. It's just absurd. Now, I, I hesitate to spend too much time on this because I'm going to get trampled by all the free speech people that we read about on online who are so worried about authoritarianism. This is authoritarianism. This is authoritarianism. It is authoritarian insofar as that you had a school department that basically uh, drove this teacher out. It is authoritarianism because it is this sort of fundamental uh, uh, fundamentalism and parochialism that is, um, you know, motivating these attacks on this teacher. It really is. It, it is. It's alarming and it's spreading and it's growing. Here is um, Matt Walsh. One of does he self proclaim as a theocrat or does he just say I've been attacked as a theocrat? But he, he he's is, a Christian conservative. His say, his yeah. uh, Twitter bio says um, theocratic fascist. Yeah. Oh, right. But he's, okay. Yeah. But is he being facetious? Well, I mean, I that's the whole game. But right. No, I, see. I don't right. think so. Yes. The fact is uh, that, yes, he's being cute. He is a theocrat. And I think that he is fas uh, fascistic. He's definitely authoritarian. And the guy's a, uh, a fundamentalist. He's a religious uh, fundamentalist zealot who cannot abide by anything that does not support his worldview or his orientation mm -hmm. or his sense of how other people in the world should react to him uh, and therefore has built a career atta attacking those things. Lying in the f and lying to serve it, too, because, you know, as we saw in the Joe Rogan <laughs> experience, um, he was fact checked about basic transition numbers for children and he he got it wrong by like hundreds of times over thinking it was in the millions when it's in the 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 single digit th th low hundreds per year but single digit thousands per uh, over a multi-year period so he's a liar in service of god which is what theocratic fascists do lying for the lord is a thing yeah it is uh and it's how mike pence could serve ungodly trump because it was in the lord's view so just think of you can Google that. This I'm is just Lord, he's I mean. just Mike Pence, but like with with again with with beard dye. Yeah. A little more from NBC. It says Bonner says that she understands parents. Pause it for a second. Hey, can I just also say, and we'll start it up from the beginning. Like I love how he is on this big flannel shirt kick because he's trying to prove he's trying to pivot into this sort of like manly thing. Yeah. Haven't we seen him like talk about like <laughs> hockey's not manly? Yeah. He's doing like the um uh because uh, they're on ice skates. Yeah. It's not manly. <laughs> That's so gay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would love for him to see what hockey play. If he, if he's he doing did the Josh Holly, Get on the ice, Matt. Yeah. He's doing the Josh Holly thing. Yeah, understand. He's done. He's played out his, his transphobia. He can't get any more audience out of transphobia. He knows this. So he's starting to put on um, uh, these flannel shirts and trying to do the manly thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to predict you're going to see the glasses go away soon. Okay. That's my big prediction with uh, Matt Walsh. I say it now today. Bring the fedora back. He's going to, he's, <laughs> he's going to. Those he's, are always manly, right? He's going to get rid of the glasses because he can't quite get there. Do go we ahead. get cigar though soon and liquor in a glass? There'll be, there'll be more stuff. All right. He's got the banjo out there. Does he play the banjo? I wonder. Yeah, Matt Walsh fun. is like, I need my accessories, please. Let's go. A little more from NBC. It says Bonner says that she understands parents know their children best and believes that both parents and educators have that love and care in common. Quote, the difference is that I have that love and care for all students, not just a singular student, she adds. In regards to the book that was challenged in my classroom, it was a message to the LGBTQ plus community in my room and in my district that they are less than. OK, first of all, uh, it's important to, to say that um, no, you don't as the teacher, we don't have, if my child is in your classroom, we do not have love for my child in common. I love my child, okay? I love 
all of my children, I would I would die for them. OK, I would jump in front of a bus for them without hesitation. Pause it. Uh, was he the guy that said he'd kill himself if his children were trans? Yeah. Well, they, or, or basically, like it would be it would be a fate worse than my own death. OK, so he alluded child. to yeah. it. So, unconditional love asterisk so not everything yeah i mean i would die for them but would i uh you know accept them uh uncritically being a gay person <laughs> mm, i don't know about that all right but here he's going to say that his love trumps her love for the students because what you want is you want your teachers to be cold and distant <laughs> and have yeah. no genuine caring i I think she, as a parent of a 10-year-old, probably understands that the love of a parent is slightly different from the love of a teacher. But he's going to make it, I mean, this is a twofer for him. Because it's not only attacking, um, it, it is attacking teachers in the teaching profession. Because yes. remember, an overall uh, agenda for these type of authoritarian fundamentalists is they want to raid the money that is there for taxes for schools and give it to parochial schools. That is what Betsy DeVos and her husband had as their number one agenda for decades. That's why they undercut teachers unions and do this too. Um, but all right, so keep going. I love all of my children. I would, I would die for them. Okay. I would jump in front of a bus for them without hesitation. Um, I love them more than, than, than my own life. That is not, how you would feel about my children because they're not your children so no we don't have this oh yeah we both love your kid no that's that's can you that's, pause it just real quick yeah. how many school shootings have we had where we've had teachers put their literal lives on the line and die getting themselves in the way between a actual gunman and kids no he and wants I'll them say, to strap up he wants them to strap up and protect my kids so wait, wait, wait hold on yeah good point matt that what you want so the, the it's their cold-hearted duty like they're guards at a prison to assassinate school shooters coming in and gonna kill your kids but they can't have a semblance of love because everything is within the patriarchal family structure that's the only pr way that love can exist no collective love no appreciation for children i mean that's their vision of an atomized gun-toting society where there's no community love whatsoever that's what teachers exhibit community love or they should for the students but no right. community that's what the they don't want the teacher who doesn't love her students not saying that they, that she loves them in the way that a parent would necessarily but the teacher who doesn't love their students is not a good teacher. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just I, 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 I've had two kids, uh, uh, one going through uh, every grade in, in, uh, in, in uh, school, the other one now in fifth grade, fourth grade. And I got news for you. You know the teacher that's going to be good. The one who's excited to see the kids and loves the kids and says, I love kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for you if you went through public school and you didn't experience anything approaching love from a teacher because I definitely did. Senora House, my Spanish teacher for like three years, basically uh, instilled in me that I could be like intelligent and like that sort of stuff is massively important. And these people, like Emma said earlier, they hate that. They hate that the state does that for people. Yep. No, that's 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 uh, if, if that's the case. We are using the word love in the broadest and most meaningless way possible. There is at a minimum, no. you know, a distinct difference between the love that a parent has for his own child and the love that just people have for other people in general. That's a kind of charitable love that we're all called to love people in general. It's not the same as the love that I have for my child as a parent. Pause it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going. Well, it's just the no point is... It's a straw man. No one's saying that. No, of course, of course. Of course. I would say that the type of parents that he speaks for fail at love. They fail at love in the most tragic and heartbreaking way when they are unable to get beyond this dumb bullshit and accept their children, child for who they are. Well, he's like, just lying. A failure I mean, and the fact is, we're not talking about just anybody. We're talking about people who go into a profession where they know they're going to take a tremendous amount of grief the financial rewards are going to be limited yeah. and they dedicate uh, their lives uh, to, to, to helping children. You, you don't do that unless you love children. I mean, who? No, no, no. What they do it for is the constant harassment and the doxing on libs of TikTok. That's what teachers are in this for. They just want attention. They just want attention. 
And that's an important point. Because this is a comparison, you know, they, they, they want to claim that, oh, yeah, I love your child just as much as you do, if not more. Which, gives, which, which they think gives them the moral authority to, you know, do whatever they want. Except gay kids. So according to this groomer teacher, the only way to treat the Suing. LGB, quote unquote, LGBTQ plus community equally is to sexualize and groom children. Now, you notice something else that there is no heterosexual person um, demanding this sort of thing on the other side okay we're we're not oh, so hold on this is such a uh, this fuck? is this is I, I, honestly that i i really do think that he could come close to getting sued for calling her a groomer, a groomer that's yeah. unbelievable um it'd be interesting i'm sure he, he ran that by the lawyers um uh, but let's be clear the he's making it about like how do we measure the love here uh because he knows he's got nowhere to go with this she introduced a single book amongst others to educate uh the children and to also offer support for them there the idea that you could go into any school in the country and not get a book from the perspective of the heterosexual in this school uh, country is i mean beyond ridiculous it's beyond a, a, a lie it's it is the norm it's the exact same reason why is there a black history uh, uh section because the rest of history is just white and we don't put white history in front of it it's just that it's just assumed it's just assumed that's the normal history continue I mean, can I just make one more point is Matt Walsh, like this happened in Poland. They were literally calling sex education grooming, right? And if they could take it that far, they would here. Oh, they will. Yeah. They did it during the Bush administration. They did it for freaking Harry Potter, yeah, The too. HPV uh, vaccination yeah. was a license for people to have sex, according to them. I remember that. Encouraged promiscuity among young girls. Totally. To prevent them from getting HPV, which could lead to cervical cancer. Well, that's the price you pay for your sexuality, right? That was their argument. This sort of thing on the other side. Okay, we're, we're not um, we're not asking for classrooms to provide graphic descriptions of straight sex or how to manuals on the subject. We're not asking for that. LG, LGBT activists claim that exposing children to pornographic content is the only way to ensure inclusion and equality. But in, inclusion in what equal in what way? What we want is for all sexual instruction to be removed from the classroom completely. Kids do not go to government educational facilities to learn how to have sex, or at least that's not why they should be there. Human reproduction should be covered. Pause it. Uh, the um, sex education, in addition to um, uh, clearly helping with things like teen pregnancy, right? Um, in junior high is if anything is late <laughs> in yes. terms of it is late mm -hmm. and this is what the fundamentalists the fundamentalists the religious zealot fundamentalists these theocrats do not want sex education taught in the schools period and that's where they're taking this because they don't want kids to be empowered to say no i got sex ed in fifth grade and that was not too early at all for that. Like we were all like um, theorizing about sex beforehand, wherever. Like as far as I'm concerned, that that was like perfectly on time. Like Ten years old. I had friends, girls that were uh, developed earlier in fifth or sixth grade, and we got our sex ed what like sixth, seventh grade, something like that. I did. Um, that they could have used that earlier when they were getting a little when someone was a little getting a little grabby with them. They could have used that earlier to know what was wrong with that situation. And also notice it, that you're protecting oh, yes, kids. No, you're yeah. protecting kids from getting sexually molested if you give them the tools early on. Like what they're doing is greasing the wheels for grooming with this exactly. kind of stuff. Exactly, hundred percent, making kids more open to being groomed. And notice that he says government educational facilities and not schools. Like he's it's it, it, oh right, like this is supposed to be indoctrination right. center. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sanitization of like what the it's it's removing any sort of positive valence from the idea of a school being like a public good. Yeah, it's, that's the point. they are. He wants people to be going to madrasas essentially. Right, right. Not Char uh, charter schools. Not or, not uh, Islamic I, madrasas, but mm -hmm. the the functional equivalent. Right. And it's wild because like Tulsi got here too, and you could say that there was this a while where they were just saying this is about like the trans. 
and then it's about gay and trans. Now it's just about any sex ed yep. in general. Do we have any more of this or no? Yep. Done. In biology class at the appropriate age. But aside from that, um, none of this stuff should come up. As I've said before, I don't even want abstinence taught in the schools. I'm not advocating for an abstinence only sex ed education because now that would certainly be much better. That'd be a much better alternative to the left to the left's preferred strategy of instructing children on the fine details of every sort of depraved fetish. I, I but mean, it still would not be ideal because the most. Ideal sorry, we can't just keep, like uh, depraved fetish. Like how to uh, use a condom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they've they have done study after study after study after study about the efficacy of sex education being taught in schools versus abstinence only yep. education you can see direct lines to increase teen pregnancy and increase stds stis in schools and in states in districts that don't uh teach robust sexual yep. education efficacy is not the issue i know the but issue, that's, an, well, that's no, a side uh, yes but but the point is he he is specifically yeah. railing against efficacy because it is this is what the definition of indoctrination is he wants only a fundamentalist ideology to be represented in this account for all children yeah fundamentalist ideology which is god handles sex not people mm -hmm. but you're a, you the only thing you're going to learn and, and let's be clear what is it that we learn from sex education it is two things how not to get a sexually transmitted disease and how not to get pregnant and he does not believe that humans should have the ability to decide particularly women whether they get pregnant or not and certainly does not believe that they have the right to end a pregnancy. He also believes that if you get a sexually transmitted disease, that is God's wrath being imposed upon you. And that is the way it's supposed to go. I mean, you can find this in every one of his positions down the line. There is no uh, man-made global uh, climate change. This is God's affair. He is a theocrat. He is a fundamentalist theocrat and if uh, apparently it's open season on using the word groomer by the evidence of who actually um like we said about the effects of what sex education actually does to arm kids against knowing like what inappropriate touching is for instance not walsh is being the groomer here not that teacher and let's also be clear what is the greatest uh, um the the largest institution of grooming that has ever taken place and as far as we know mm. organized religion. international yeah yep he's grooming for them do we have any more? Take 20 seconds if you want to finish it. <sighs> F this guy. Yeah, it's fine. We got the gist. Yeah, we, we, we got it. <laughs> God is great. God is great. God will take care of all of it. I, well, I That's think... That's what it, his, his message is. I think the Less demonic better. Matt Walsh might have cured my cold. <laughs> <laughs> it got me so... This will clear the sinuses. Fired think, yeah. up that I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm back, baby. I mean, they're all just gone Q QAnon, but it's all part and part and parcel of the same. That's that's what it is.